couch here in Istanbul. I'm going to be reading a poem called Missing the Boat. It's not so much that the boat passed by and that you failed to notice it. It's more like the boat stopped directly outside your bedroom window, the captain blowing the signal horn, the band playing a rousing march. The boat shouted, waving bright flags, its silver hull blinding in the sunlight. But you had this idea you were going by train. You kept checking the timetable, digging for tracks. And so the boat got tired of you, so tired that it pulled up the anchor and raised the ramp. The boat bobbed into the distance, shrinking like a toy, at which point you probably realized you have always loved the sea. So I chose this poem uh, in part because I have been traveling over the last few months. I was on a farm on the coast of Portugal and I'm currently in Istanbul where I just landed and um, I can almost see the Bosphorus from here. So I have been by the sea for uh, a little bit of time now. And so the content, the title, the subject matter of the poem immediately felt appropriate to me at this moment. But it also feels familiar and appropriate, I think, to this experience we all have probably been going through in, in one way or another, uh, being about a year, I guess, a year and a half into the pandemic. Um, there's a skewed sense of scale in the poem and also in that experience uh, where whether it's a skewed sense of time or a warp of geography or just space in general or in a larger sense relationships emotions um, the experiences and conversations that you have with yourself and with the world that skewed scale appears quite early on in the poem when the boat pulls up directly outside your bedroom window. So that felt possible in uh, the reality that is going on right now. But there's also this larger thing of missing the boat. Um, the, the poem builds on that phrase, which is, you know, a a common phrase in some ways, but really for me, especially now, points to not just missing the boat, but who or what is missing and who or what ha uh, is being missed. And also who or what is not communicable or um, unspeakable. So this idea of missing makes me think of a recent moment where I was reading about the etymology of the word desire, and I can't break it down perfectly, but it was, I, I could translate the etymology to something like feeling the absence of the stars. And so you have desire wrapped up with this feeling of absence, which is also a feeling of something being missed or missing. And that's really interesting to me. Um, it, it feels timeless, it feels nautical also a little bit, and it has that intimacy that I, I experience in the poem. But you had this idea you were going by train. Those are some hard hitting lines in the middle of the poem. Uh, in a sense, they really show or reveal the anatomy of the inertia getting rechanneled into the wrong place um, and the isolation and the miscommunication that's going on between the subject, the speaker, whoever, me, uh, in the poem and, the, and this boat, the, the boat that's shouting or waving, um, blinding, really. 
So you had this idea you were going by train. You kept checking the timetable, digging for tracks. There's this energy this of, of the land activities that uh, feels familiar to me as a writer, even on this larger level, where you often do feel that you're just pouring time and energy into activities or projects um, or ideas, right? Dangerous, you had this idea uh, that are not necessarily going to work out, or maybe they're in the wrong location. They're on the land and not the boat, um, or they're, they're just, it's, it's a different kind of loss, right? You're losing energy in that, in that moment. And then the boat does, the boat disappears. Um, but, and so the, the loss is real, but um, in the final stanza, there's something very interesting that happens uh, because, well, I'll just read it. The boat bobbed into the distance, shrinking like a toy, at which point you probably realized you have always loved the sea. So here, the word probably points for me directly back to you had this idea, you were going by train. The unsteadiness of that language, the way that it embodies a type of confusion that is very relatable to me, uh, but pr you probably realized. So here, all of that dislodged or um, miscommunicated energy from before feels like it's transformed into a realization. So this moment in the poem, in the final stanza, it, it's almost like the poem heals itself over. There's a healing process uh, that is not actually a healing at all because you still have the loss. The boat is still gone. Um, but the boat gets replaced by this other figure, this other body that has uh, the sea. So um, you have always loved the sea. And that's the realization, which to me is a sort of grounding realization, even though it doesn't have to do with the ground at all. Um, this structure, this body of water the sea, which has never appeared in the poem before, comes in to replace the boat that has become actually quite menacing at that point. You know, the boat did this, the boat did that, uh, the boat, the boat, the boat, but now you have the sea. And the realization is you have always loved the sea. And it just steps in to hold you or hold me in the poem. And so I find that healing without healing process to be quite grounding in this moment, um, especially because the sea has always been there. So we go back to that feeling of timelessness and intimacy. The coordinates of desire are effectively rearranged and a another or an, a kind of always already um, pathway or avenue opens up in in the experience of of the poem or of this moment when I read it. So thank you so much for joining me um, and I hope to see you soon.